Hello, this is a follow-on from my previous video about draggable objects in Power Apps. Um, you can see I've taken it a step further and we've now got three objects on screen and we can select any one of them um, from this gallery and I can drag it around the screen, I can drop it there, move this one and so we've got all three uh, modes of transport on the screen and we, we can just move them around like this. So, and they're all using the, the, the one slider, very very lightweight, um, so I'll break down what's going on here. So if you haven't seen the other video, I advise you go and check that one. That will explain how to get to the point where you're moving one object around the screen. And so the difference with this one is we're creating a collection. So up to this point, it's exactly the same as in the first video. The slider is configured in exactly the same way. Um, the difference is in this collection. So we're creating a collection on the app start of call objects. We've got three objects in it and each one has its own X position, its own Y position and its own icon. Okay, dead simple. And then we're just resetting the gallery so the gallery has nothing selected. Okay. We identify the icons by hijacking their um, their tab index property so the tab index of this one is set to 1 icon 2 is set to tab index 2 and so on 3 is set to tab index 3 so by doing that we can use a variable and then we when, when they select the gallery we can set a variable to bar selected object this item ID so if I click that, selected object ID is going to be 1. Okay, so that's that's the first step. Um, the other thing it's doing when I select the gallery is it's capturing the current position. So in other words, if I've selected an item right now, uh, and I move that around, I need to play it, move that around the screen. The reason I need to play it, of course, is because there's a timer controlling our our slider backwards and forth um, so it won't work in, in, in the edit mode so as I move that around when I click on here it's gonna say okay I've got some coordinates stored for this one I need to patch the collection with those new coordinates so this stays where it is and then I'm gonna change to the other item okay I'm gonna set the variable to be the ID of this item now on the icons themselves they need the nice thing about this is once you create the first one you can pretty much just copy them because it's they're referring to themselves um, if we look at the X property of this so this is saying if if my own tab index is the same as the selected object ID then use the X position coordinates uh, minus myself width just to get it bang on central if it's not that, if it doesn't match, in other words, if I'm not the selected object, then I'm going to revert to my um, collection value. So I look in, in the collection, check check the ID against my own tab index, um, and get my X position, which will be the last X position that I had recorded. Now that X position gets recorded every time we select a new item. And this is where it does the patch. So if we have a selected object, if it's greater than zero, then we're going to patch our collection and does a little look up to check the the ID is the current selected object ID. And then we patch these my X position with the current X position. In other words, the slider's current value um, and the, the Y position the same. Okay, so that's hopefully this is making sense. Uh, happy to answer any questions on it, but um, hopefully you can see kind of what's going on there. Okay, and then we ca and then we take the X position to be whatever the last recorded value of this one was. So it's picking it up in its current position. In other words, so if I if I drop this here and change that coordinate is now stored. So if I switch back to it, okay, it's putting that back into X position and Y position. 
all this will become clear if I put a couple of labels on there but I think hopefully this is making sense to people if we go expose and let's put a and y pos we can see how those change so currently to move this around those values when we change they're going to be patched to this object in our collection they will now be stored and it's picked up new values from this item or rather from the collection using this items uh, tab index move it around and when we change that's those values get stored in the collection hope that's making sense um, I really want people to play with this and come up with things I'm imagining like a, a kid's game Mr. Potato Head you know put your ears or wherever um, you know chess noughts and crosses this kind of thing so uh, but obviously you need to build collision detection and you need to then know do these co do these coordinates do they fall within a certain range you know has this been dropped uh, where we want it to be that kind of stuff is where my brain's going next but uh, have some fun with it and uh, enjoy cheers <laughs>